At the sound of Madison's laughter, Kelsey felt goosebumps prickling her skin. What are you laughing at? She demanded. What does she mean by if he doesn't marry you? She wondered. This was ridiculous to her. If it turns out that the Weston family isn't able to hold a wedding reception for Ian and Madison, Madison will have to treat me with the utmost respect whenever she sees me. Her mind went into overdrive. It had always annoyed Madison when people looked down on others. Apart from being a member of the Weston family, Ian was a fabulous surgeon. Mercy Hospital was the number one hospital in the state, and Ian was the best surgeon there. Madison couldn't think of many people in the world who would ridicule a doctor like him. Her family's entitled nature was preposterous. Do you want to know why I'm laughing? She said. Her eyes glowed with mirth as she looked at her half-sister. I'm thinking about how much money I'll need to borrow from you for my wedding with Ian. Madison spoke. Kelsey scoffed, but Madison didn't bat an eyelash. She watched as Luke was the first to walk out of her room. Kelsey followed him but paused in the doorway. Madison, do you really need me to remind you that you might not even have a wedding reception? But if you marry that man, you'll be criticized, even though you're a Greenwald, she blurted. Her eyes bore into Madison, whose smile had completely faded. Kelsey continued smugly. Father and mother won't be caught dead with the Westons. They'll never let you do this to our family. Maybe I should ask father to beg Drake to stay with you. Kelsey turned on her heel before Madison had the chance to speak. She followed Luke out, leaving Madison in a panic. She took some deep breaths to calm herself. Eventually, she couldn't help but laugh at the whole situation. I should have expected this. People are so petty. I really shouldn't expect anyone to have my back. Ian has been protecting me for two days, and I'm already becoming useless at standing up for myself, she thought. Her thoughts turned to the effect her family dynamics must be having on her husband. It must be humiliating for him that my parents refused to meet his parents. No wonder he got so angry downstairs, Madison analyzed. Madison desperately wanted to help, but as someone who had never been valued by her family and lived in fear of them, how could she gather the courage to stand up for their relationship? She was still worrying about this problem when her phone suddenly alerted her that she had a new message. She looked down at it in frustration, but as soon as she saw who it was from, a smile spread across her tired face. It was her brother, Zach. Madison, it's late and I bet you're still up. Do I need to come back just to make sure that you get some proper rest? Zach, don't worry. I'm getting ready for bed right now. We'll get to sleep as soon as you can. Don't put off your advertisement project anymore. When I get back, you can help me advertise. Madison thought carefully about how to respond. After a few minutes, she replied, Hey, were you aware that Kelsey is getting married? Do you think you'll come back for the wedding? Zach didn't send a message for a long time. Finally, her phone buzzed. Do you want me to come back? Madison looked at Zach's reply, and her mood lightened significantly. She hugged the phone to her chest, lay on the bed, and replied to him, I haven't seen you in so long. You'd better come back, and when you do, I have something important to tell you. Across the ocean, Zach smiled at his phone screen. He responded in mock sternness. You'd better go to sleep now. I don't want to come back only to find out that you haven't been taking care of yourself. If you say so, she replied, and then she looked up at the ceiling and considered the possibility of Zach meeting Ian's parents. Her mood had finally improved a little. At that moment, what she wanted most was for things to be as easy as possible for Ian. She didn't want to put any more stress on his plate. As soon as she put the phone down, it rang. Upon seeing that the caller ID read Ian, Madison blushed a little, and she felt giddy. When she picked up the phone, her voice caught in her throat a bit. Hello? Ian raised his eyebrows slightly. Are you crying? He asked softly. Madison's face turned a deeper crimson. She was simply feeling shy. Why would he think I'm crying? What's there to cry about? 
she wondered. Her favorite brother was coming back to support her. Soon, she would be fearless. She settled in under the covers, getting comfortable. No, I'd just fallen asleep, that's all, she lied. Well, I just wanted to let you know I'm home. Also, I have to go to work tomorrow. Grandma asked me if I would spend some time with her. If so, I'll pick you up at noon during my lunch break, he replied. Won't you be tired from working so much? Madison retorted. It will be too hectic for you to pick me up. I can just take a cab there. You should focus on work. Ian smiled a bit at that. She was so considerate. He was silent for a moment as he considered the offer. No, I insist. Why don't you wait for me at home, and then I'll come over to get you as soon as I get off work, he proposed. Without giving her a chance to react, he quickly said goodnight and hung up. After setting down her phone, Madison went into the bathroom. She prepared for bed, and then finally went to sleep. Tired from all the graduation prep, Madison slept until nearly noon the next day. After waking, she quickly got dressed. She was about to go downstairs to eat something when her phone rang. It was an unfamiliar number. She picked up the phone and politely greeted whoever was on the other end of the line. Hello, Madison Greenwald speaking. Madison, this is Ian's grandma, Diana. Her voice was a little loud, as if she wanted to convey how excited she was to be talking to Madison. Are you up and about? Why don't you come over and eat with me today? Then the two of us can go out for a stroll, she asserted. Madison was stunned by Diana's directness. It took her a moment to gather herself again. Just the day before, it had seemed like she didn't like Madison. Now, not only did she have her phone number, she was speaking as if she genuinely cared for her. Madison sputtered a response, Yes, of course, I'd love to. When the call ended, Madison scratched her head in frustration. A moment later, her door creaked open. Her widened eyes scanned the doorway where Ian stood. He had heard part of her conversation and could clearly see that she was intimidated by his grandmother. It was written all over her face. Her black hair was tangled up into a bird's nest from both sleep and scratching her head nervously. He stepped into the room, his pitch black eyes giving her a once over. Madison suddenly felt very vulnerable, almost as if she weren't wearing anything. She was about to ask him to leave when suddenly he spoke. You're looking a little worse for today. It was clearly a playful remark, but it made Madison self-conscious nonetheless. She looked into his eyes, which seemed to burrow into her soul. She immediately lowered her gaze. Ian noted her shyness. If I had known you were alone, I would have come in sooner to talk to Grandma with you. I know she can be a lot, but once you get to know her, you'll get along splendidly, he explained. Madison chafed a little at this. Ian's adamance that she spend time with Diana almost seemed like a threat to her. And besides, she was still feeling self-conscious about her looks. Is he displeased with my appearance? How could he have made that comment about me? Doesn't he know how lucky he is to be with someone like me? The more she thought about it, the angrier she became. Ian was oblivious to Madison's thoughts. He sat down on the bed and looked around. When he saw the things that Madison had been preparing the previous night for her graduation, his eyes narrowed. He felt her silent presence behind him and suddenly turned around. Let's get ready to leave. I have another surgery scheduled in the afternoon, he said. Madison nodded and went to the bathroom to tidy herself up. Then she grabbed her purse and Ian laced his fingers with hers. They remained like that, holding hands. Meanwhile, the rest of the Greenwald family was preparing for lunch. Ian and Madison greeted Stella when they came downstairs. Madison acutely felt that the energy in the household was off. John's eyes bore into Ian, filled with contempt, while Kelsey looked at Madison, her eyes alight with disdain. An alarm sounded in Madison's head. Having grown up in this family, she knew better than Ian how to protect herself. But just as she was about to say something, Ian pulled her away and out the door. Madison was grateful to him. She would never have thought that she could be so protected by someone. By the time they arrived at the Weston's house, everyone in the family was waiting for her. 
Ian couldn't stay long and soon rushed back to the hospital to prepare for the afternoon operation. Come, Madison, Diana said cheerfully once Ian had left. She pulled her over to the dining table. Olivia and Edward were already sitting down. After lunch, you can go to Ian's room and rest for a while, Diana continued. Once I wake up from my nap, we'll go for a walk. Seeing as Madison couldn't possibly refuse, she nodded and smiled. Madison was pleased to find that the Westons were extremely polite. She felt like they really cared about what she had to say. Diana's eyes flashed with joy, and she seemed to approve of Madison, whom she now thought was kind and courteous. Suddenly, Olivia leaned in. When do you think your parents will have time to sit down and discuss your marriage with Ian? She asked. Madison's heart skipped a beat. She felt like she was walking on thin ice. She opened her mouth, about to respond, when Diana interrupted her, changing the subject. Grateful, Madison heaved an inner sigh of relief and faced Ian's grandmother, who was looking at her cheerfully. She couldn't help but smile back. Actually, how about we go to the hospital to see Ian after my nap? Diana said. If we're lucky, perhaps we can get him to come back with us she proposed. Madison nodded again. She couldn't refuse. However, she never would have thought that during the afternoon she was spending with the Westons, her family would still be plotting to hand her over to Drake.